My friends, today we are doing another galaxy goddess painting. I don't know what's with the jazz hand. Today we are going to do it a little bit different. Um, I'm going to try to make the video shorter by um, fast forwarding the parts where I'm actually painting. But like the parts where I'm explaining, I'll just have it in real time. So it'll be a little real time, a little fast forwarded. So you can actually get through the video. <laughs> um, I just had a bunch of really um, wonderful suggestions from the YouTube community, which I like super appreciate everybody that helped me with that. Um, with, you know, editing suggestions and making my intro shorter and or not having one. Um, and I'm going to be playing with those things. So just bear with me. Um, so my videos might be switching up a little bit, but it will be like the same. I'll still be doing painting tutorials. Not that anybody's worried <laughs> that I would stop or not. Anyway, um, so today, like I said, we're going to be doing um, our second Galaxy Goddess painting. And I will have the painting. I didn't put the painting in there last time, like up in the corner, but I promise this time I won't forget to do that. So if you want to just kind of, if you're a more advanced painter, you can just take the image and just pretty much copy it. Most people would be able to do that even if you weren't an advanced painter because this is a, um, I gotta stop, I gotta make this shorter. I just sit here and talk for like hours Together. and then I, um, I'm, not I'm making them for my living room like I said last time. So they're all pretty much almost exactly the same but the girls and the silhouettes are a little bit different. Um, so we'll just start how we started last time. I am starting with a pre-blackened um, canvas I and mean, I painted this myself with just black paint. You can use black gesso, which would make it really um, smooth, make the tooth really smooth. This is already like a pretty smooth tooth canvas just because I don't like really rough canvases, especially for acrylics because I just don't like the look of them. I don't like seeing the tooth through the painting. That's just my... Some people like that, I don't like that look. But if you like that look, you know, that's your taste. It's just, I find it harder to paint. I'm like, especially if you're trying to make really like crisp lines like we are, it's kind of hard to do that when there's a really like heavy so tooth. the supplies you're going to need today are, it's a round, it's a bigger round. It doesn't really matter the number for that. For detail work. So a, I believe this is also a zero round. It just has shorter. Use this um, one. It's a three eighth simply Simmons angled. Um, and I may I use this number ten uh, flat to do the um, the black. So I don't know. I mean, I might use that or not. And then this is like a smaller. I don't know what number this is. I really don't take good care of my brushes, um, but I'll find all of that information and I'll link it below. And I also don't know what brand these are. They're not that good. I mean, they're not horrible. I got them at Hobby Lobby. Um, and if I can find them, I'll link them. Um, or at least I'll put the name. Okay, so for paint, I'm um, using Liquid Tactics Basics, Basics again. Titanium White, Myers Black, Blue, Primary Red. And primary. I also need a sea sponge minus the paint, but we're getting that right now. Um, we're going to start our um, sponge painting on this here. We're going to be doing our galaxy clouds. Well, I call them galaxy clouds. That is not the proper name, but this is just what I call them. <laughs> we're going to be doing our little galaxy clouds, and I'm not really going to do any rhyme or reason. I'm just going to kind of place them in ribbons. Um, where I think that I want them. So I'm going to start off with just blue right now. Just the straight um, primary blue on a dry sponge. And I'm just going to go to town. So this part will be fast forwarded.
Okay, and I also forgot to say that um, I really, well, actually, I went too low. So I kind of want my horizon line right here. Um, it's almost halfway up on this one. So I do kind of want it to match a little bit with the horizon line on my other one. Um, just so when I have them hung up, they're not going to look uneven or weird. I want them to look like they're supposed to be together. Um, so I'll probably put it like to right about here. So just don't worry about that. <laughs> you want to create depth in this. So when you're doing this, make sure you don't have to have the black dry. You don't have to because it will help blend the colors a little bit. Um, but it does help if this is dry. Um, I didn't do that on the last one just because... It, I mean, it really doesn't really make that big of a difference when you're doing something like this, um, but it will save you time. So if you're short on time, just take your blow dryer and blow dry that on a cool setting. Do not use a hot setting because it, it will, um, the top layer of the paint will dry before the bottom layer and it will like, it could like flake off. So I suggest that you just do like a low setting, um, a low heat setting. I don't think like the if it's like on high, medium, low, low that matters, but the heat setting you want to keep that low. Anyway, just wanted to let you guys know that. Yeah, if I'm even in the frame. Okay, so yeah. Um, what am I saying? So we're gonna go in with a lighter color blue now. Um, and how I'm gonna get that is I'm just gonna probably mix around one to one. Um, and I'm not gonna actually mix them. I'm just gonna dip into the white and then dip into the blue. Um, when you're doing this, if you want to salvage some of your white, like try to only use like one side of it. So the other side you can use like if you just need straight white or something so you don't, you know what I mean? Um, so I have both blue and white. I'm gonna have to put more blue on my palette, but just like this. Uh, and then just kind of pounce in between and then it'll kind of create that depth for you so you don't have to like let it dry, go back and you know what I mean? It'll save you a little bit of time. Um, I know a lot of people like say like, Oh, you know, when you're doing these galaxy paintings, you've got to create depth. You've got to have like all these different layers, so it so it creates that illusion of depth. Um, I think just the contrast in general of having a really dark with a light will create that depth for you without having to make a thousand layers and make a very chunky painting. Um, that's just my opinion on it. I mean, art is subjective, right? That's what people always say. It's kind of like um, people may say, you know, they'll go through years and years of training, but honestly, it's like anything else. It's like music too. It's just a theory. It's not set in stone. You can make art however you want. You don't have to do it the way, so even if, you know, you want to change something on this painting, change something on this painting. It's your painting. Just because you're following the tutorial doesn't mean you have to do it the way I'm doing it. Do you see what I'm saying? It just really you know, just do what works best for you. And that's kind of how I've adapted to learning how to do a lot of different things is that I just make it work for me. I mean, I have learned so many different skill sets in the past few years. Like I became a seamstress. I've done a lot of furniture um, makeovers and just all sorts of different stuff. And, you know, you just gotta like let down your guard and not be afraid and just go for it. Just try something new. And, and it just goes the same with like art. Just because, you know, this person says it has to be this way, it doesn't. Just just make it, if you're making it for yourself, just make it how you want it and how you like it. You know, I don't know. I mean, it, it's just paint. If you screw it up, it doesn't matter. You can just paint over it and start over again. Especially with acrylics. <laughs> They're very easy to do that. Very forgivable. Forgivable? Forgivable. Forgivable. I know I sound like a motivational speaker, but... I mean, this is really, you know, how I think about things. It's, you know, it's important to do things the way you want to do them. And not just, you know, 
even if somebody has more experience, it doesn't necessarily mean they can do it better or they're right. It really doesn't. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fast forward this part. So now um, that we have this down, see what I mean? This looks crazy. This really has no rhyme or reason. A lot of galaxy planning, you know, they'll have like a, like a star right here and they'll create like the um, outburst around the star. Um, I don't want it, I mean, I want this just to be super easy and super loose and you know, that anybody at any skill set can make this and make it look beautiful. Um, that's the point of it is for people who or even people who are more advanced and you want to do that you know do that make it you can make it like how you think it's supposed to be made i just want this to be easy you know what i mean and and so you don't have to think about it too much so you can just paint and relax and have fun and have it be almost like therapeutic in a way and and that's kind of just how I used to be really rigid in my painting and I would be so hard on myself and ever since I feel like ever since I kind of let go of like having all of those standards and having to have you know it has to be this way um, I actually feel like my painting has gotten better kind of like I freed myself so I feel like you know I, I honestly I do I kind of feel like it's it's growing as I've grown as I've matured my painting has matured if, as I've matured is that crazy probably but so now I'm gonna make kind of like a purple to sort of deepen up like the blue um so I'll just add a little bit of red I'm gonna add a little bit of the um what the hell are you called primary red to um my blue just a, like a little bit um that's probably too much the same thing oh, yeah. you don't have to like mix it I mean you can I I'm not even gonna do that today just like I said I just want this to be as easy as possible so blue on one side, red on the other, and then um, I kind of want it like, you know, where I have like the deeper color, I just want to deepen it up a little bit and kind of like go on the edges of these and make them, um, make it deeper. Do we have to be careful with this a little bit though? Um, because you don't want this to get muddy. You don't want your color to get muddy. Um, that can happen real easily. Instead of being a nice, bright, brilliant um, color, it starts getting really dull. Uh, that usually kind of happens when you're working with more than just like these colors. Especially when you start getting like yellow in here, it can get dull really easily. Um, so you just have to be careful of that. But I'm just going to go in with my blue on its own and make, you know, more blue because I kind of lost that a little bit. Um, so yeah, just be careful of that. I might actually go in with black too a little bit just because I like to deepen it up a little. Here a little. I think it's too much. I want that blended more. So I think we'll go in with a little bit of black. Hmm, we, I don't, I don't, maybe we don't really need to. I think I'm, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. Um, I really don't want like that harsh white in there, so I'm gonna blend it a little more. I just like a really, I like a really blended look. I want it to be too, um, you know, one color here, one color there, too much separation. Um, yeah, I like it. Okay, so now we're going to go in with our splattering. Um, I'm not going to do that way. I was watching somebody else's tutorial. Um, it was actually the Art Sherpa 
I freaking love that lady. I like sent her and a couple other like YouTube artists on like Twitter a, like a thank you just for inspiring me all these years and pretty much like so grateful because those are the people who taught me how to paint. I mean, that's how I learned how to paint is just by painting on my own and doing YouTube art tutorials. I, I never went to an art class in my life. Well, I mean in school, in, like high school. But I mean, I just have so much gratitude and especially for her, she actually took the time out of a crazy busy schedule just to like say thank you. Or, I mean, not say thank you, but to acknowledge that, you know, that I was saying thank you. <laughs> and I just thought that was the kindest thing. I mean, I know a lot of people like would, probably wouldn't think that was, you know, I just think it's a really nice thing to do. It wouldn't even matter if the person had like a million subscribers or if the person had five subscribers. Anybody that is willing to go out of their way to help you grow and help you, even if it's something that small, I mean, it's so important to remain, you know, thankful for those things. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> okay, so just bear with me. I'm one of these, like, people who, like, love the law of attraction. But, you know, the universe isn't going to keep giving you gifts if, if you aren't grateful for them. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's absolutely true. And I know from experience crazy as that sounds. I sound like a loony to um, but you know I actually think we can do uh, the stars even though this is what just because that's not gonna we're gonna start with our white um, and we're gonna like I said oh before I got on my tangent about how awesome I think the art trip is <laughs> anyway um, she has a tool that you can purchase which I would purchase, but you know, it wouldn't have been here in time for the tutorial. And she said you could just use a, um, what did she say? A hard bristle toothbrush. Um, I'm gonna try it, not her tool. I wish I could buy her paintbrushes, but they're far too expensive for me. <laughs> um, I mean, I could afford them, but I just feel very selfish. Like, especially maybe if I was actually selling art making money from that or you know what I mean I could invest in stuff like that but as of right now I would just I just would rather my money go to my children or you know what I mean I just think it's wasteful if it's not gonna be to the benefit of somebody else um these are just my paintings so I guess I don't really care what the tools are <laughs> um anyway so I'm gonna try the toothbrush thing this is an experiment. If it doesn't work, we'll just go back to the old way. Um, I just thought that I've seen her use this for like, but I've always just done it the way I knew how to do it because that's the way I felt comfortable. But I just want to try to go outside of my comfort zone. Why not? Okay, so I'll just use this to like mix it and put the water in there. Um, so what you're going to want for this um, you need your paint to be super like thinned out like it has to be um, you can use craft paint you could use um, like some type of medium that would make your you know paint thinner like a what do they call them a fluid flow fluid I don't remember what they're called anyway you could do that or you could just add water to your paint, which is like my preferred method. Um, just because I already have this and I don't have craft paint right now. And if I did, I would use that, but I don't, so I'm going to use this. <laughs> and, you know, people think it's really important, like the consistency of it. I don't really think that's necessarily true. I think as long as it's not super um, heavy. Uh, cause that's where, like, if it's too heavy, well, one, it won't really splatter off your, your tool, whatever you're choosing to use. And two, it, um, it makes it easier for it to, like, glob on there. Like, instead of it making little speckles, it'll make big, like, globs. Like, like I said last time, we're not, we're not trying to Jackson Pollock it up in here. We're just trying to, you know, make some little tiny stars. <laughs> some little stardust, some little fairy stardust, some little goddess. Us. Okay, and then she just kind of like went like this. Oh yeah, that lady knows what she's talking about, doesn't she? 
Well, obviously. She's, I need to stop talking about her. That's crazy. I sound like a wacko. Maybe I'll cut that up. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to do this because it's super easy. Yeah, it still does that though. It still makes the splatters like that. I think I must be holding it too close or something. So here's the thing about these tutorials. Like I said, I've never had any professional training. Um, and also, uh, I am, I have really haven't, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I haven't been painting that long. I mean, probably, like I said, maybe four years, maybe even less time. Um, I had no idea. My, my mother is an artist. She's been a painter ever since she discovered this, like when she was very young, you know, when she was a teenager. But then when she had um, us, she had, I have 10 sisters and brothers, so my mother raised a lot of children. Um, you know, she gave it up. She gave up her painting for her kids because she just thought she didn't have time to do it with working. And we lived on a farm and, you know, my parents worked really far away and it was a lot of work. Um, but the reason I'm saying this and telling this story is because I was so far removed from art. I mean, I did a lot of like, we did a lot of crafting when I was little. I used to be in like 4-H and we'd do like all sorts of crafting, but I had no idea that I could draw or that I could paint. Um, it was just a couple of years ago where I just randomly discovered that, um, I was like sketching something and I was trying, I don't know what made me think to do this, but I, somebody, I saw something online that said like the hardest thing to draw is a human hand. And if you can draw that, you could draw anything. So I decided to draw this hand. I don't know why it was just so, I was bored or something. And anyway, so I drew this hand and it ended up coming out awesome. Like I, for me, like for never drawing ever in my life, I was like, oh my gosh, like this anyway, actually turned out. The, the long story short, that's what started me on my art journey. Okay, I'll put a picture of the hand, like the hand, and you guys can tell me what you think. Anyway, I'm still proud of that hand because I think it's good. <laughs> I don't even know what started me talking about that stuff. Anyway, see, this tutorial is going to be long. Here I am talking. You know what? I don't even care if it like splatters and makes those little things because I feel like they kind of look like shooting stars. And it's just, you know what? It's supposed to be fun. So even if you get those like little globs or runny paint that come down, I I think, you know what? Who cares? It's just fun. Just make it fun. Um, and then we're going to do pink and yellow, just like the other one. Oh my gosh. So fun. I'm like getting freaking things all over my other paintings, but it doesn't matter. Who cares, right? They need a little sparkle in their life. Anyway, oh my gosh, if I had spray glitter to put on this, that would be awesome. <laughs> but I don't. But if you do, spray this with glitter, because that would be phenomenal. Oh my gosh, I like this so much better. It's so fun. I love this so much. Sorry. I get like, so over enthusiastic. It's, I shouldn't. I should not do that. Okay. So, ba, 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 ba. we're going to do our pink now. I am literally just going to add it into my white just to make it easy on myself because it already has water in it. And I'm just going to, I want it like to be a light pink. So I'm just going to add like a little tiny, just a little tiny bit. Um, that does have to be mixed. You have to mix that in because, um, well, you don't want red and then pink and then you just want it to be one color. Um, probably use a palette knife. Well, if there's already water in this, you can't use a palette knife. Yeah, just mix it however. It doesn't matter. Um, and make like a light. It, honestly, the color doesn't really matter. If you want to do a bright pink, do a bright pink. If you, even, you want to do purple, put purple. You know, for whatever freaking colors you want on it, actually. Uh, these are just the colors I'm doing because that's the color I did on my other one, and that's just what I want. <laughs> so you, you want to do green, do green. If you want to do, you know, just choose. If you want to put every single color of the rainbow, I think that would be fantastic. But I just don't have the time to do that. Otherwise, I probably would, to be quite honest. Knowing me, I would. I just, the more color, the better. Just, I'm going through this thing right now. It's funny because, like, the last couple of years before just a little bit ago, 
I was so into just like, obviously you can tell by my walls. I painted my entire house as like light gray color and like even my clothes and like just everything. I was really into like white and gray and very a muted palette. And all of a sudden I'm like, give me color. Like the more color, the better, which kind of sucks because I painted my whole house gray and everything. And well, I guess then it's a neutral and I can decorate with art and, you know, accessories then. Anyway, I'm going to stop with the talking. I just think this might be a little too thin. A little more white in there. Hopefully it's not too light. Okay, so we got some on our little toothbrush and then we're gonna just keep trying the art chirp away. If I say her name one more time, she's gonna have to pay me. Um, you know, I think this is better because it's like not as messy, but the only thing that I don't like about it is one that it gets all over your fingers and two that they're not as big as when you just tap it. You know what I mean? I might get too far away from the palette though. Um, so like how I'm doing this is I'm just like, I don't know if this is how she does it. I just saw her using this and I would, like I just watch other people's art tutorials for fun. I don't even necessarily follow them. Well, actually this little tiny watercolor one, I followed that from, um, I'll have to look her up I don't remember her name, but I'll put it on the screen. This little tiny one, and it was like a five minute watercolor tutorial. It was really good. I mean, mine didn't turn out very good, <laughs> but hers is really great. Anyway, so um, I'm just like flicking the top of this. Anyway, yeah, I just like watch art tutorials for fun. All sorts of them. I mean, doesn't matter. It didn't even matter like what kind of art, I'll watch it. I'm like, there's just like this thing called like, I think it's called like corp art or core art, I don't remember. It's like where people like take seeds and they like glue it to like a canvas or to like a, I see a lot of people using like a, what do they call those? Like a wooden pallet board or, you know, they do. Anyway, they're, look that up. It's really um, interesting. I find it so fascinating. I saw this one once of like prints and it was like made with like little tiny seeds and they grew these seeds and it looks like you know, whatever they're making. It's crazy. I just think that would, I don't know if I have the patience for that. Anyway, I got stars all over our black, so we'll have to fix that, um, which is really easy to fix. Um, this is kind of making it splatter. So make sure you hold, don't hold your brush sideways, hold it up and down and then maybe at like an angle like this and just like not so far away. I'm too far away from my... It's actually really fun, super fun. If you're thinking about doing this, you should do it because it's super fun. If I say that one more time, I swear to God, fast forward this. I don't want people hearing me talk like this. I'm just over enthusiastic today and I have no idea why. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Honestly, other than my animals, my husband, my kids, like nothing brings me more joy than painting. Like I just get so excited. I just love, I just love it. <laughs> it's funny because before I like kind of just didn't, like before I like went through this thing where I was very rigid in my art, um, I didn't really like, I would like it for like a little bit but really like I was so hard on myself I don't know if I actually truly enjoyed it like I'd get very frustrated um it just you know kind of it's kind of sad but anyway doesn't doesn't really matter anymore why am I talking about that I don't know I have no idea this is like drives me crazy when that like when the buildup of the paint gets around the caps, I'm not a fan of that. I wish they had like, maybe I won't like. So now we're gonna move on to the yellow. Um, we're gonna just use our paintbrush, uh, and um, we're gonna do the same thing. Just put them wherever you want, and yeah, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no rhyme or reason. Just place the stars where you want them, and use whatever colors that that you want to. You know, just because I'm using you know, blue and and white and yellow and pink, you, you can just do what you want. 
do the color stars that you want to do. Okay, and then you want to add your water until your um, your color is consistency is is you know a bit runny. Like you want it to be the consistency of like craft paint. Um, I don't know, you know, who's watching this or if you're crafters, if you're craft painters, but that's the consistency you want. But maybe to make it easy on yourself, um, if you're not like if you've never done like a painting like this before maybe just buy the craft paint well it is cheaper than regular paint too i mean a lot of people just paint with craft paint um the acrylic craft paint actually i do that all the time sometimes i mean it just depends if i'm like if i'm at like let's say i'm at like walmart and or target or wherever i'd be shopping and i like really like either it's too late and uh, you know, Michael's is like closed. I mean, I don't know where you guys are from, but I'm from the Minnesota and we have Michael's and like Hobby Lobby. Those are like our craft stores. And if either one of those are closed or whatever, or I just don't feel like going to an extra store, I'll just like buy the craft paint and use that and actually usually use, it works better than like those cheaper um, brands of paint they have at like Walmart or whatever. I don't like those, whatever. I actually have some right here. It's like the... Oh, this is called the fine touch. The fine touch? I didn't, I don't like that paint. I'm not a fan of it. I'm sorry, whoever makes that paint, whatever company, but it is not my favorite. I'm sure somebody out there probably likes it, but it just, I just didn't. So you got to be careful. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you don't want to add too much water because you don't want to add too much and you don't want to add too little because then, like, that will happen where it starts, like, you know, kind of running down. You don't want that. But if it's too thick, then it will glob. So you don't want it globbing and you don't want it, you know, you don't want either one of those things. <laughs> Over this with um, black right now just to get, to get rid of that splatter because I don't want that there um, I just want it black water super um, dirty like right now so if you're doing this change your water out so your color like your black is gonna end up looking almost like gray if you just leave it um, I don't I mean I don't really care so much about mine because I can just go in later and kind of fix it up but see what I mean it's it very like murky looking people say it doesn't matter if you have clean water or not yeah it does <laughs> it it makes a huge difference in your painting and the color um it, it does if you want nice bright colors change your water 
I like I cannot say that enough. I used to never change my water, and my my paintings would be kind of dark and murky looking, and not very bright. And the reason was because I would just use the same thing of water throughout the whole thing. Okay, so um, now that we're done with that, I'm actually gonna do something called dry brushing. Um, you can take a wet brush to do this or an actual like a dry brush. Um, it's easier if you just do a wet brush. Um, you can even use your sponge for this. And I'm just gonna blend this like upward so it fades into so like now I'm just gonna like do the dry brushing thing. Um, I guess maybe I'll just use the same brush I was using here, this flat one. Um, I'm not even sure if this is flat or not. I think it is. I have no idea, honestly. Um, so I am just gonna blend this like upwards with just water. Um, just so see how it just there's no what it, blending. It's not blended. Anyway, so we're just going to blend it with just the um, water and the dry brush. I don't like, actually, I don't like using this. Scratch that. I'm not using that. I already used the filbert. Um, just because that, the rounded edges of this actually make it so um, there's no, like, harsh lines. And if like this isn't working that well, you can just add some black paint, just a little bit, just to, you know, make it easier to blend. Literally like leaving nothing on the brush and just going over this, just to fade it up. Um, yeah, so you just kind of like drag your brush up. Don't go too far because then you're going to take away your entire sky. <laughs> so we don't want that. We just want it to like fade. We don't really want stars on our ground, I'm assuming. Okay, so we have that done and now we are going to, I took that up really high, but that's kind of how it is in the photo. Um, and I got this photo from, um, a website called Pixel. Yeah, it's called Pixel. It's called Pixels. Pixels or Pixel? I don't know. Anyway, um, there's some like little tiny like trees and stuff kind of where she is and it kind of bows down um, in the picture, but I kind of just wanted it just like a diffused like from grown to like light. It kind of looks like she actually on a hill anyway so I think we're gonna do our moon right now um yeah wait are we gonna do our moon I'm gonna actually blow dry this so before you start your moon or your goddess you want to make sure this is dry um just because well it's not gonna work especially with the moon you're gonna get like a bunch of different colors in there and we're gonna do a crescent moon just exactly the yes. same as we did in our last we're gonna do our moon right now. Um, so what I'm going to use, so you can use like a little piece of chalk if you want to dry your moon out. Maybe I'll do that, I don't know. Yeah, it's dry enough. Just make, like I said, make sure this is dry before you do this. Um, let me see. So this is gonna be like pretty much right in the middle. And like if this was cut, let's say this is like our first quarter, second quarter, um, you know, if it was, and these were, if it was in a grid, there were three and then there were two, if it was cut into like the rule of thirds, um, our moon is going to be a quarter of the way down, like just pretend there's three squares up here. It's going to be 
like right here in the middle. If you cut this right down the middle, you sliced it, and then it was a quarter way, it's gonna be like right about here. Make sense? Pretty sure that makes sense. Okay, oh my gosh, you wanna, you wanna get so bad. I saw these like chalk pencils. They're like pencils, but they're like chalk. And I think people like seamstresses use, like, use them. Use it, it's the, it's the, <laughs> now I can't, okay. Now I just like can't talk at all. Seamstresses, seamstresses, seamstress, seamstresses. Usually use them. Um, anyway, I want one so bad because it would make my life so much easier. I'm not actually like the biggest fan of using chalk. Um, I like watercolor pencils kind of, but they're really hard to use if there's already paint. Um, I, you can't really see them um, if you already have paint on your canvas. So you really kind of have to use chalk or just go in with paint, uh, which, you know, for a lot of people, they don't want to do that because then, you know, if you make a mistake, then you have to go back in. Um, this is really easy to fix a mistake on just because it looks like a bunch of stuff splattered because it is. Anyway, so a quarter of the way down, um, we're going to make a little crescent moon. Um, we're going to make him his point right here and he's going to be tilted sideways. Um, he's not going to be like this way, he's going to be tilted sideways. Actually, the moon is a woman, I think, isn't it? Are we going too high? We're going too high. Quarter of the way down. We want him right about here. Her. Moon, the moon is a woman, just so you know. It's a feminine energy. Okay. We're going to make our little moon, little tiny crescent moon right here. See? Makes it so much easier. Um, we could have put it a little bit over further, but you know what? It's already there, and that's its home. That's where it wants to be. Okay, so um, it's just kind of awkward when you're filming to, you know, because if you're straight on the photo, it's a lot easier, the painting, it's a lot easier to place stuff because you can see where it goes, but it's fine. No worries. Okay, so then I guess uh, we can do the chalk outline of the goddess as well. Now, she is, I think she's probably... Now you can do this too. If you want, um, this would make your life so much easier. If you like have never painted, you can actually take like a ruler or something straight and break this up into a grid style right on the canvas itself. It would make it so much easier. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe in our next tutorial, I'll actually do that. So, um, you can make it even easier for somebody who maybe has never painted before. Yeah, I'm going to try that next time. This time I'm not because we already started. <laughs> so our um, our lady is, is gonna be, yeah, probably right about here. Want her to end, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I, I the moon in the picture is really small and I know that it's very important to um, keep the scale correct um, when you're painting, but this is kind of like, this isn't, this is obviously not a realistic painting. Um, so, you know, like the, the scale, yeah, you don't want to draw the moon like giant. I mean, if you want to, you certainly can, you know, but scale is important. So, um, in the, in the picture, the moon is like much smaller, but if you think about that, if I make the moon this big, I mean, you're, it's going to look like a star. <laughs> so I'm exaggerating the moon a little bit is what I'm trying to say. So we are going to draw our goddess. Um, and she, I'm going to move her over here so I can see her. Make her a little bit bigger. Um, let me see her. Boy, her face looks kind of weird. She's kind of looking up at the moon. Um, I love these pictures so much because I really feel like it's really, I feel like whoever photographed these really wanted to like get, the, okay, this is just in my own twisted mind, really wanted to get like the, um, 
like the feminine energy across in this because like really the moon is all about like like if you study astrology or if you study um like cabal or if you study like the tree of life or the tarot um i feel like i'm not scaring a bunch of people here i wouldn't want to scare anybody away but if you you know if you've ever like read up on those things um that's really like what the moon represents is our is our unconscious and which is like going to be like the feminine side of you and i kind of feel like this this picture that this photographer um i don't think this is the same photographer it might be probably is they're very similar photos it, it has to be the same person i bet it is i'll check i'll let you guys know um i feel like it's like between like you know how like i don't know i just really feel like it's it's really about like that feminine energy and like the like how the silhouette is like dark like masculine energy I don't know maybe I'm crazy I have no idea that's just kind of like I feel like it's about like the 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 difference between those energies and I don't know I just sound I sound like I am I have no idea what I'm talking about <laughs> So it kind of looks like she's looking up at the moon. Um, it doesn't really show like the silhouette of her like her profile. Um, it's really just kind of like it's not exactly like rounded. Um, you can see you can see her like little forehead and stuff. This is gonna be harder to do a chalk, obviously, because um, well, it's not a fine point or anything. So we're just gonna kind of do like a rough outline of her. And then her hair goes, I don't know if you can see that, can you? Yeah, you can see that. So then she's looking up towards the moon. This is like her face right here, but it's really just kind of a curved thing. You can't tell, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so this side is going to be up a little bit higher than that. Uh, you don't want to do... What was I saying? Oh yeah, the reason I don't like chalk is because it actually, like for me, it dries the paint out. Like when you're painting and you're painting over this chalk, it like makes it hard to, you know, I don't know, that's just my opinion. It kind of makes it hard to paint. <laughs> so yeah, her hair is kind of just sort of flowing here. And then her head, shoulder here. And you don't want to get too carried away with the size because remember like there's a good amount of space in between her and the um the side of the why don't i just do the outline of her with the chalk and then i don't know what i'm saying My hair's not in the way. Okay, so we're working kind of on like where her arm is. So where the tip of her head is and her arm are kind of in the same line. Um, so this is going to be like where the tip of her head is matches like where her, I don't know if that makes any sense, where her body is. Okay, so. Um, Hair kind of just goes right here. I know this looks crazy right now and it doesn't look like a person at all, but we're it's it's just a silhouette. So it's just gonna be like the outline of her. Okay, so that's her arm. And then it looks like her armpits 
right about like here and her waist goes in and out. Obviously her waist is gonna go in and out because she's a woman. Okay. So so if this was her other arm. See, and this is the cool thing about the chalk, you just don't like where the line is, you just like erase it. I don't know why I have that line there. Um, see, and this kind of goes at like like the angle that I have that at. You can just like, let's say I don't like this. So then I can kind of switch the angle that I have her neck at. See, isn't that cool? Um, so this armpit is up higher than this one, so this one's gonna be lower. And it's almost even with where her neck is, it's just a little bit over. So if we went straight down, like where her neck is, like where her neck curves, and then it's a little bit lower than the top of this one. So we'll just go a tiny bit lower, right here, and that's where her waist will go in right there. And then we can draw the other side of her arm here, and it kind of just sort of grazes along her body. It's a little bend in the arm right there. And see, so this is going to be too thick. So what we want to do is erase that, make her arm a little bit smaller. She doesn't have a very big arm. We're going to make it a little bit smaller here. I'm going to go in. And it kind of gets smaller the further it goes down. So here's the nip of her waist. Um, we want, you know, if this is the top of her waist, we're going to want her hand like right about here. And you don't want it too far down, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, you don't want it too far down, otherwise that's going to look crazy. So then, that's her little thumb, and just a little curve for her hand. You, I mean, this doesn't matter because this is you don't have to be detailed with chalk. Um, but it kind of shows her hand a little bit, just kind of curving in. And then, um, this actually, the dark goes up higher. Um, so. What we can do is kind of make that higher. All right, so there's our goddess here. I'm going to erase that because obviously we don't want that in our painting. Um, and then her hair. And this is just going to be blacked in. So we'll start with the white, and then we will. I'm going to make sure that's not paused. We'll go to um, the dark. So I am just going to take. Um, either one little like a little detail brush it doesn't have to be like a zero round or anything just anything small and outline your moon in white titanium white so whatever we did with the chalk and, and if you want it smaller you can make it smaller I think I'm actually gonna make mine a little bit smaller than I drew it out I'll just follow the inside of the chalk line and then when it's dry obviously you can just erase those marks I'm just going to fill in the whole thing with titanium white. And so um, you can actually, like if you're doing this at home, the thing with titanium white is if it's not that um, good of a brand, um, if it's not a high quality uh, product, it will be almost translucent. Um, Liquid Basics does have a pretty good pigment doesn't have the best pigment um, but you know it is what it is I'm probably gonna have to go over this a couple times to get it as um, bright as I want it
Our moon kind of looks like a banana. Um, <laughs> well, at least mine does. I don't know if yours is gonna, hopefully not. Okay, so now that we got that um, righted in, we'll go to our goddess. Um, and I'm gonna use another detail brush. This is a Simply Simmons one, so that doesn't matter, but. Uh, and I'm not gonna use the Mars Black for that because I just don't think the pigment's dark enough. I'm gonna use this Master's Touch, even though I don't like it that much, but this is um, a permanent black, which is actually a little bit deeper than that Mars Black. That's just what I think. I think the pigment's darker, I'm pretty positive. Um, so I'm gonna go in with this just so she's nice and deep. Um, so we're gonna do that. And since we already outlined this, I'm not sure I really have to like film. I don't know, we'll see in editing what I do. I don't know, I'm not gonna put that in though. So let's just outline her. Um, I'm really not gonna make it look like I'm gonna kind of just round it for her face because in, in the photograph, you can't really um, tell that it's the profile of the top of her head. So what I would recommend is honestly, just kind of, um, you could just sort of do like a rounded edge. Um, I'm just gonna kind of curve it in a little bit where like her eye and her eyebrow bone would be. So I'm gonna make like a little, like a little bump and then a rounded thing. And then like, so this would be like where her eye is. And then um, this is gonna be like where her cheek is. But I want it to be like really, like you can't even hardly tell that I did that, what I'm trying to say. And besides, once I fill this in, you won't be able to hardly tell at all. But the most important part about this, I would say, is that you have this forehead part right here higher than that. Um, that I think is the most important. I don't know, but my cat is going crazy. Just run around meowing everywhere. Oh my gosh, that's getting too high now. See, it's starting to get dry because that darn chalk. Excuse my cat. You're weird meowing. Okay. So remember, this is just uh, a silhouette. You don't really need like a bunch of detail or anything. Um, it just doesn't, I'm gonna wait to do her arm just because I'm gonna see where this carries me. Um, you don't want it too, you don't want to put too much water with this because you want to have control of where your paint goes, but you don't want it so stiff that you can't make a nice line. Um, so you want it somewhere in the middle with like your water. Um, and I, like the other one, I'm actually going to like over exaggerate like her hair. We're just doing the outline right now, so I'm not going to get too crazy on her hair. Uh... This is where her hair kind of, see that's the thing with this paint, it's so dry and then you add like the chalk and it's really, you can make some of these little fun things right now, why not? I mean, even though we're just doing metal line, it just kind of gives you an idea of where, you know, just to keep it in line, I guess. 
Okay, and then when you're doing this, the harder you push down on your brush, the the bigger the line. I mean, I know I explained that in a couple different tutorials, but if you're gonna push really hard, you're gonna have a thick line. I don't know if you can see that. If you, okay, let me get, I need water on here because it's so dry. Uh, this paint is not my favorite, honestly. Okay, and the lighter you, you know, the lighter you go, the smaller your line. See, I'm not pushing very hard at all. I don't know if you can see those. I'm pretty sure you probably can. Um, anyway, yeah. So if you want a thin line, don't push really hard. If you want a nice thick line, push hard. <laughs> so like if I want some really tiny wispy hairs, I'm gonna go really lightly with my brush, right? I'm gonna go super light. Um, the outline of her, you don't have to have super thin lines because um, we're block blocking it in. So if you wanna push hard right here, Go ahead. It doesn't matter because it's going to be all black. <laughs> it's going to be all blocked in. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's not going to really matter. Okay. I think she needs more of a hip. She needs to have some curves, honey. It's no fun when you don't have curves. I'm just kidding. I have like no curves. <laughs> I used to, and then I lost a bunch of weight when I had my son because he was psychotic and ran everywhere all the time. I had to run after him and I lost like 60 pounds running after my son. Well, I guess I gained it anyway from having the baby, but still, I yep, used to have curves. Not so much anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna do the outside of her arm right here. Um, just kind of match it to the top of where her forehead would be, to the top of her head. And that's kind of where it is. And then as you go down, you're gonna curve it towards her body. And you're gonna want it to stop right about here. It doesn't really show any detail of her hand, so you don't have to worry about that. Literally, just kind of um, curve it towards her body. Just like that. That's all you have to do. It's super simple. Um, and then, so right here is where her armpit is. Right about here. If you make a mistake like this, it's super simple. You can just take like a piece of your sponge and some of your, you know, if it's not, if it's dried out, just, you know, take your sponge. Like see, I just made a mistake. And this is super easy to fix. You're just gonna take your, um, your paint, little like piece of your sponge or your big sponge, it does not matter. Just go over it, see? Look, like erased. Um, I didn't like how I had her arm, even though I chalked it in, but I just didn't, I thought it looked too, too wide. So, see how easy peasy? And then you can either wait for that to dry or not. And, and you're just gonna wanna curve it in a little bit more because it was just too far out for my liking, that is. Um, so that looks much better tonight. I'm gonna do her waist first on this side. Why, I don't know. I have no idea why. So you're gonna wanna try to keep this as even as possible with that. Um, and just remember this is gonna, if this doesn't look even, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's gonna be, gonna be blocked in. Okay, and then we can just kind of follow this line straight down. And I am gonna bring this up a little bit higher just because like in the picture, it's like, it is a little bit higher. Okay, 
So we can work on her little shoulder now. Pull that down. Okay. Okay, so right here, where her waist curves in, you're going to want to kind of curve her arm up like that. Sort of follow her waist a little, and then it's going to curve in. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So it kind of goes like with the shape of her body a little, like this. I mean, it is just a silhouette, so it's not really gonna, I mean, it's not gonna impact the painting that much um, if it's not completely perfect. And like I said, just, you know, you just wanna have fun with it anyway. It doesn't have to be, you know, so you're gonna make her little arch for her thumb and it looks like it actually goes in towards her body. It needs to be darker right there. So her hand's going to curve in towards her hip here, where her thumb is. So let's just pretend that's her thumb right there. You don't actually have to draw it. Just kind of color block it in. Okay. Color her in. You don't really need you don't need me during this part. Um, I'm just going to take a round and just take my black and just color her all the way in. And then if there's anything we want to fix, we can fix it after. Um, yeah. I'll just fast forward this part. Okay, and so what's super important is, like for me, if I'm painting at an angle like this, I have to step back and look at it and make sure everything's even. We'll work on her hair in a little bit, but see like for her hand um, If I'm not like perfectly happy with how that turned out I Can just take a uh, you know a, like a little liner brush like this or my Simply Simmons and Take you know some blue. I don't think that's enough. Anyway, I'll take some of our blue And I'll show you you could just fix up the lines So it's like, just for me, because I'm not, you know, I'm not a professional painter. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not 
super, maybe not even super good at painting, but here's the thing, you can always fix it. You can always make it look, you know, as good as you can. And you don't have to be too picky with it just because this is not, you know, this is just a, like I said, it's like a silhouette. So just, you know, just take this and go outside of the line here and just sharpen it up. See? And so then what you're gonna do after you do that, if you're like, you know what I mean, if you don't like the shape of the hand, this, kind of fix it up a little. I think it goes out too far. I think it actually goes out too far on that side too. So, you could just fix it up a little. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your little sponge and just sponge it, it's like sponge it. So wait, see? Don't go onto the black though, because if you go onto the black, you're gonna smudge it. So you have to be really careful when you're doing this, or if you do it, if you decide to do this, you just have to be super careful. Because you really don't want like that blue outline on there. Just like rub it in to the, background. You can even use your finger. Let's see, just use your finger to, to blend it out. So really you're kind of like just dry brushing away your mistake. <laughs> what I like to call it. Um, yeah. So then what you can do now is go back to your little liner brush, one of your liner brushes, or whatever you have, or whatever you're using. Um, you'll go in there and just, you know, fix up the line. Um, I'm just going to take some um, of the black and just kind of like scrub it in right here just to make the horizon like a little bit higher. Um, want to. <laughs> I just think it should be a little bit higher. I don't want to get it too high because then it's going to be going to take away from the painting, but I think it needs to be blended a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to dry brush it up. I just want it kind of very hazy like this right here. Kind of like, yeah, like it's misty or something. Okay, so we've got almost all of her blocked in. So now we're gonna work on her hair. And we're gonna use a little detail brush for that. Um, and just create like little tendrils. And the reason I didn't completely block that in is because it's gonna make it, not that it has to look realistic, because it's really just not a realistic thing, but um, just kind of, you know, it's fun to kind of see those little pieces of galaxy poking through her, her pretty hair. And remember, the harder you push, the, the bigger the, you want those little tiny ones, you have to be super light on your brush. Um, so like, and this part is kind of longer.
whatever is like when you have cats and their hair sticks to your paintings. It's like, Ur. okay, I think she's great. So what I'm going to do is I am going to dry her. I bet our moon's probably dry. Um, I actually think the pigment on the moon is just fine. So I'm actually going to leave that. Um, but I am going to take some yellow uh, and go around the outside of the moon so it looks like it's glowing. Uh, just like right along the outside of it, right here. All the way around. I mean, I know that's not very realistic, but it, this isn't, like I said, it's not <laughs> a realistic painting. It's just conceptual, I guess you could say. I'm not even sure what the right word is for that. So we got our bright moon. Um, I'm going to dry her and then we have a fun little um, thing we're going to do with her. So oh, she we'll is um, dry now. Uh, there's a couple of spaces where she's not that deep in the color, but I'm just going to let that go <laughs> for time's sake. And I can always just fix it later because I know that kind of stuff bothers me. I mean, I'm still working on being okay if, you know, things aren't completely perfect. It, you know, it's hard sometimes to do that. Okay, so we are going to add really fun, like, light spheres going up her. Um, that's what made me fall in love with this in the first place. And they're kind of like more of an orange. So we're going to take some of our um, primary red and a little bit of our mainly more, uh, not on that brush, good load. I don't want black on there. Um, make sure your brush, if you were using it in the black paint, make sure it's like completely like cleaned off. Preferably in clean water and not dirty water like mine. Anyway, so I'm gonna use one of these little detail brushes, a little bit of red, um, more yellow than red. You're gonna make really nice, like almost orange color. Um, almost orange color. If that makes any sense. It's really muddy. Is that muddy? Kind of muddy. Um, my color is kind of muddy because there was still sort of black on this, but I just don't have time. <laughs> okay, so these like light spheres are probably traveling from like, I would say like from like right about here and they're like sort of traveling up um, through her. So we don't have to place them exactly where they have them. I mean, I'm going to try my best, but you know, you, you got to look at the, the painting and say like, where would you want to place these? If that makes any sense. There's too much water on my brush. I just gotta get new yellow. Working so on our light like spheres. Fun. We're gonna use our um, red, primary red, and our primary yellow. Um, and we're gonna make a little mixture. And we are gonna make a really pretty um, kind of orangey color. Who's that? Who's that? Hi, Boo. Mm -hmm. Daughter's down here now. Of course, that I'm almost to the end. Okay, so now we have this really pretty fiery um, orange color. I've got a darker one and a lighter one here. Um, we're gonna make these little spheres going up her, you know, traveling up her body. That's the biggest one. 
So then the next one is kind of, you know, in the middle here. And, you know, since we're doing this over black, we're probably going to have to go over these um, a little bit. You don't even really have to mix the color if you don't want. You can just dip into both of them and kind of just do that so then they look a little more like these pretty feathery balls. <laughs> and just swirl them together. Um, that'll give it a funner look, I think. I don't know what these spears are, honestly. I don't know how they got those. These are not orbs. It's almost morning time. I don't know how they did that. Pretty cool though. <laughs> Okay, and now these are going to get smaller as we go up, so, um, it's kind of two right here. Yeah, however they did that, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure. Honestly, I have no idea. Okay, so now this is where they start kind of, um, Following the line of her body. I just kind of travel up. This is probably the most difficult part of this painting just because, you know, sometimes it can be kind of hard to make little tiny balls. <laughs> I'm so immature, I'm sorry. Um, and so as we get further up, we're going to make them smaller and smaller. Just until we get to the point where we want to um, just make dots. Little tiny dots. Um, and what would make this uh, easier is if you had one of those little um, metal, um, so like a little dotter. It's like a little metal dotter. It has a little like ball at the end of it. I, I don't know. Say you use those on squishies for like the heck? Oh. Oh. Mouths. Whatever. A nap was like 20 hours long. <laughs> yeah, and then it kind of travels to like where her heart chakra would be. <laughs> the guinea pigs or yourself? Okay, and you're just gonna make a whole bunch of little dots at this point. Um, and just keep going over them until they have enough pigment that you obviously want to be able to see them. A little bit of yellow on this one. See it? You can see the yellow a little bit better. That one a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's pretty. And I kind of think these look unevenly spaced, so I'm going to add a couple more of those bigger ones to get down here. Um, yeah, definitely going to add. Maybe like right here, and see that's what I meant by you gotta make it like look like how you know you would want it to look. Not just just because it like it's like that in the picture doesn't mean you have to paint it exactly like the picture. Yeah. And you can make them, yeah, exactly. You could. Oh, if you did these like the color of like the chakras, like the chakra colors, I think that would be beautiful. Yeah, shadows. Well, this is a 
kind of is a shadow in itself, so. Um, and I think maybe I'll make this little orb, as my daughter called it, a little bit bigger. Maybe that would make it look better. I do want one right there. I want one right there. I want one right here. that's a constellation or what the idea of that was but I just I, I love the idea of this so much so now what we can do is we can take our these kind of look like they're glowing so what you can do is just kind of take your yellow um, and a bunch of water and kind of really thin it out so it's um, pretty liquidy and even you could add some like white to it if you wanted and sort of just go on the very outside of these right here and sort of make it look like it's glowing. Um, this one had too much pigment. But yeah, this will just kind of make them look like they're glowing a little bit. Uh, which, you know, that's what we want. See? It's so pretty. Um, and as you get further in, I guess you don't really need to do that because, well, they're so small. It'd be kind of hard to do that. Um, so, yeah, I kind of think... Was that a show of what paintings we made the background? Yeah, first, I think... And then we did, uh, um, I think she's done. I think our goddess is done. So this is the final painting. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I hope you, you know, like it, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. So thanks for hanging out with me, and um, next weekend we will have another one, our third in our series of our Galaxy Goddess. Thank you for hanging out with me, and have a beautiful, awesome, awesome day. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>